Hallelujah. In the book of Genesis, chapter number eight. In the book of Genesis, chapter number eight. Chapter number eight, at verse number 20 and 21. sing a solo I'm singing now y'all can't hear me praise the Lord it's a song in my spirit in God all right the Genesis chapter number eight everybody got it it reads verse number 20 and Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth neither will I again smite any more every living amen everything living as I have made I'm sorry as I have done neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done can you say I have done look at the ninth chapter in verse number 16 And the bow shall be in the cloud. And I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. Father, we thank you for your word on today. We give your name glory and honor. And we give you all the praise. And it's in Jesus' name we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. amen. And amen. We're thinking about, <clears throat> amen, heavily something on my heart this morning. God, amen, wants us to know who he really is. Amen. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody have an experience. And sometimes you take your experience Amen. And you label something incorrectly because of your experience. You might have thought that your teacher was mean. But as you got older, you realized that was one of the most, amen, loving ladies you've ever been around. The blessing, amen, that you got from her, how to discipline yourself, how to study. I should held you accountable. Your assessment of her at the beginning might have been, if I can just get out of this class, I'll be all right. But had you gotten out of that class, you may be, amen, going to another, maybe going to school as, after you got, amen, in your 30s because you might have, amen, failed everything else that you tried to do. But because you, amen, stay with it, because you begin to adhere to the things, amen, she was teaching you, you begin to correct some of your behavior and fall in line with some things, amen. You grew to be, amen, a pretty good individual, disciplined, respectful. Can I get a witness? You, know, you didn't realize what she was doing to you or for you at the time. 
And a lot of people got the same amen ideal sometime about God. One guy told me a long time ago, if God was so good, why did he let my uncle die? I tried to be amen, cordial, but I said amen to myself. You're going to die too. We're all going to die. Can I get a witness? But the good thing about God is, amen, he's made a way that after death, in this life, we'll live forever. We are eternal beings. Nobody know God the way they think they do, so they label God, amen, often. And they think he's a mean God because bad things happen on the earth. But that's life. Can you say life? And what God wants us to know is, amen, in this life, you're going to have trials. There'll be tough times. There'll be times, amen, that... Uh, you wish you had never, amen, encountered. But in the end, you realize that it was all working for your good. It's good to be disciplined. Am I right about it? It's good to suffer. Amen. Suffering has redemptive value. It's not good to you, but it's always good for you. A lot of times, amen, we are the ones, amen, who bring things up on us and we blame other folk. It will blame God, amen, for the results of our decisions. Am I right about it? Man in our, amen, Genesis had gotten so vile, they began to, amen, sin so hard that it repented God that he even made man. And God said, I know what I'll do. I'll just wipe man off the face of the earth. Every living thing that I've made, I'm going to, amen, Get rid of it. Isn't God all right? But Noah, the Bible says, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, he found grace. Amen. He didn't create it. God, amen, put his grace upon Noah. Well, because Noah was sinless, don't get it wrong. But, amen, God, amen, found grace, or Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah didn't earn that. God blessed him. Can I get a witness? And God, through Noah, amen, left a link for humanity, amen, to once again sprout and spread and fill the whole earth. The Bible says that Noah and his sons and his sons' wives and Noah's wife went into the, uh, went into the, um, the ark that God told Noah to build because God told Noah that he was going to send a flood. And Noah, amen, obeyed God and built that ark. Now you look at God and say, well, God destroyed everything on the earth. But you got to look at man too because man, amen, wanted that. They got what they deserve. Can I get a witness? Tell your neighbor, say, man got what they deserve. The Bible lets us know that when, amen, God sent the flood, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. About a month ago, I was in one of the worst storms that I've seen. I don't know, there may have been worse storms, but I was probably on the inside. But in this storm, I was on the outside the whole time. And I saw the rain, how it was falling, and I saw the water gushing down the street. Praise the Lord. And I said to myself, I don't know if I've been in a storm like this. Fifteen minutes went by, and the water was already up, amen, to the car doors. And I'm thinking, I can understand now why 40 days and 40 nights of rain like this, it wouldn't take long for my air rat to be covered with water. Empire State Building, you can kiss it goodbye, because you won't see it in about, amen, three or four days. But God wiped everything out by water. And he saved Noah and Noah's family. And he saved, amen, clean animals, amen, as well as vile animals. And the Bible says when Noah got off the ark, he built an altar unto the Lord, and he began to offer up those clean animals. And God smelled a sweet savor. Ain't God good? Can you say ain't sometime? Isn't God a good God? Aren't he lovely? <laughs> Ain't he good? 
when Noah offered up those animals, amen, the smoke went up before God and God smelled a sweet savor. But what I love about this more than anything, it says, amen, that when God smelt that savor, the Bible says that the Lord said in his heart, we're talking about God now, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of his heart or a man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. God said this in his heart. He's a creator. He is the one, amen, who said, let there be light and there was light. He was the one, amen, that divided in God, all right, the waters from the, amen, earth. Seas and rivers put the stars in their socket. Can I get a witness? Here it is, amen, this great big God saying in his heart, Look at God's, amen, heart here for a minute. He is a God who's sentimental. He's a God who's compassionate. He's a God who is loving. He's a caring God. He's a kind God. Amen. Never again. Why? Because a man is continually evil. The imagination of his heart is what? Evil from his youth. A lot of people think that that, amen, is not true. They think folks are only evil who show certain, amen, patterns, amen, who do certain things, certain outward expressions. Am I right? But let me tell you, your actions, amen, or lack thereof may deceive yourself, but it don't deceive God. Can I get a witness? That that you don't say don't mean, amen, that it's not what you're made of. Every man walketh in a vain show. There is none that doeth good, no, not what. We always think, amen, that God honors us because we're these good people. But you must understand that God, amen, blesses you because of who he is. He have mercy on you because he knows that you need him. He blesses you because he knows that you can't help yourself. Can I get a witness? He, a man, took men off the face of the earth and every living thing that he had made one time. But the second time, a man, he said, never again. Why? Because men's heart is continually evil. Never again when I smite every living thing that I have made. I got a plan. These animals that Noel have put on this altar, the blood that they have shed, the smoke, amen, and the savor that I'm, amen, smelling right now, that's good. Instead of a man's life, I would take an animal's life. Why? Because man is made in the highest order. Man is made in my image because of my loving kindness. Never again, isn't God good, will I destroy every living thing that I have made. Never again will I be merciless until those who are made, amen, the highest in my image. From now on, instead of ocean's blood, amen, I'll take a, amen, pigeon instead. I'll take a sheep, isn't God good? I'll take an oxen. God, amen, wanted us to understand that we don't deserve anything from him. We haven't earned anything. That's why you can't, amen, point fingers at everybody else. Come on, somebody. Can I get a witness? Not understanding, amen, that God blesses you in spite of you. He don't bless you because, amen, you earn it or you deserve it. Come on, somebody. Wish I had a witness. Yeah. Everybody don't agree with that. That's because, amen, we don't understand the grace of God. Those who think that they earn God's favor don't understand that grace can't be earned. It's unmerited favor. God blesses you because of what? Who he is. When I stepped outside this morning and saw that rainbow over the church, it was God's way of saying, amen, I am protective of my kingdom. 
I am protective not only of my kingdom, but amen, I got the whole world in my hand. I got this ocean. A lot of people, amen, are feeling dismayed because of so many things that are going on in the world. Let me tell you, amen, you only been here, amen, a few years. You don't understand that there's been chaos from the beginning of time. Many folk have you thinking, amen, that it's worse now than it's ever been. Well, you didn't live in the 1800s. Come on, somebody. You didn't live in the 1600s. You didn't even live, amen, some of y'all in the 1900s. Come on, somebody. Can I get a witness? You didn't live, amen, in Mississippi in 1950. But it's worse now than it's ever been. In God, all right. I come to tell you, amen, that God is a good God. That it's not worse now than it's ever been. Come on, somebody. You look at your situation now and think it's so bad. But ask your grandmother. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Can I get a witness? I love God because he first loved me. I love God because God blesses me every day in spite of myself. I love God because God, amen, blesses humanity in spite of themselves. When I saw that rainbow, I began to understand God is a God of integrity. He is a God that will keep his promises. He shows love, amen, through a rainbow. That I will, amen, keep my promise, not simply because I made the promise, but because I love humankind. Never again will I destroy the earth, amen, with a flood. Let me tell you how man got it wrong. We sang songs. It won't be water, but fire next time. Way back in the Bible days, Noah told the people it's going to rain. But when he told them, they paid them no mind. And when it happened, they were left behind. I tell you, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. You better get ready and bear this in mind. Because God showed, no, showed him the rainbow sign. He said it won't be water but fire next time. Bump. You got to understand something, saints. If God makes his children a promise, never again. When he smelt that sweet savor and said in his heart, never again would I destroy all that I've made. Never again would I destroy the earth and everything living on it. Amen. Why would he make his children a promise that they can hope for and that they can hope in and that they can, amen, look forward to, amen, to brighter days and a bright future, amen, walking with their God here on this earth. Every now and then walking out and see a rainbow, amen, over his kingdom. Never again will God destroy all living things by a flood and then bomb. He destroys it by fire. What kind of God is that? Not the God that I know. Come on, somebody. Yeah, we think that God's going to destroy everything by fire because we don't understand the scripture. We don't understand what the Bible is talking about. Wish I had a witness in here. God, amen, understood, amen, that man's heart is continually evil from his youth. And I got to find a way, amen, to preserve mankind. Why? Because mankind, amen, can't preserve himself. Therefore, amen, when Moses came along, God said, amen, that man's sins will be forgiven. They had a day of atonement every year. Well, the priest went in with the blood of animals and sacrificed for the sins, amen, of Israel. Can I get a witness? And when man sinned, they brought, amen, an animal sacrifice to the, amen, temple. Because God took an animal instead of a man. Why? Because the wages of sin is what? Death. But God had a plan. God looked along down the line and said, animal, amen, blood is not good enough. And Hebrews chapter 10 tells us, amen, that if animal blood was good enough, amen, to take away sins, then animal blood would have stopped being, amen, offered year by year. But because animal blood could not take away sins, they had to keep on offering animal blood. But he said, I got a plan. Isn't God good? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Can I preach for a little bit? Just, just a little while. 
because I'm sitting here and God showed me about this rainbow. But God, I didn't have that today, but God said, pitch it anyhow. And this, amen, God that we serve looked along and down the line and understood, amen, that animal blood was not good enough. Why? Because we are above animals. But we're not above, amen, the only begotten son of God. He's the only one that has God's DNA. Can I get a witness? Isn't God good? But however, I'm his son, but I've been adopted into the family. But Jesus, amen, came to shed his blood that we all might be able, amen, to enjoy life, not only on earth, but when we leave here, amen, we got eternal life waiting. We should have a witness in here. We don't enjoy life often because we're always talking about what the devil is doing and how things are so bad. We should have a witness. Yeah. We bring, amen, havoc upon ourselves because as a man thinketh in his mind, as he thinketh in his heart, I ain't got no witness. Negative thinking bring about negative results. You're going to have issues, amen, I don't care how positive you are, but when you have an issue, amen, in your positive mind, they don't bother you the same. When it's a woe is me attitude, you're going to be woeful. But when you understand that if God be for me, he's more than the whole world against me. Isn't God good? When Satan look you in the eye and say, I'm going to bring you down, well, you got to bring me and God down. Come on, somebody. And I don't think you can do that. He'll separate you, amen, from God through your mind. Can you say mind? And because we don't understand, amen, how much God loves us, we begin to look at us instead of, amen, the blood of Jesus, amen, for us. If God be for us, he's more than the world against us to include the devil. Stop belittling yourself and say, whatever I'm not, God makes the difference. Wish I had a witness. He'll tell you everything about you because nobody know you like you. Can I get a witness in here? But you better understand that God knew you the day he died for you. God knew what you was all about. He said in his word, his heart is continually evil from his youth. Ain't nothing changed. Come on, self-righteous folk. Nothing has changed. Man is still man. They still have the DNA of Adam since the day he was born. Even little children, they man, get to snatching things from one another. Ain't got no witness. Why? Because we all come from the same stock. We all, amen, came from, amen, Noah. Can you say Noah? And those who were with Noah, amen, God took them out. But we all came from what? The same stock. But what I love about God is God always understood, amen, from Noah's day that man needed a savior. Not only did God, amen, send us a savior, but God sent us a sign that he'll always be a savior. He sent us a sign that he'll always be for us. And if God is for us, who then can be what? Against us. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, God loved me to death. And God died for me. And then God sent me a sign in a rainbow, amen, to let me know that he'll keep his promise. Let me know and reassure me. I got reassurance this morning that God, there's nobody like you. When I saw the rainbow, it meant more than just the fact that he won't send a flood. It began to remind me, amen, of who I'm really dealing with. I'm dealing with not only the Savior, amen, or the, amen, creator of the world, but I'm dealing with the Savior of the world who will keep all of his promises, amen, to mankind. Why? Because he loved them. And the Bible says when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died not for the saint, but for the ungodly. Scarcely for a righteous man will one die. In preadventure, you may find one man to die for a good man, but Jesus died for all evil men when we were yet without strength. Nothing has changed. When God looked at man, he said, amen, never again. Never again. You better believe that God's word is true. You better start thinking about you, amen, how God see you. How God see you is his sons and daughters. Come on, somebody. And God loves you no matter what people think about you. Don't let nobody tell you, amen, that God, amen, is against you. Saints of God, our biggest, amen, competition or our biggest, let me say, hindrances to the love of God, to feeling God's love, come from one another. Especially Ella Jackson from the church. 
you ain't dressing like this, you ain't his. Somebody mentioned this morning in Sunday school because they had on a pair of pants. If you don't do this, and if you don't do that like this, then you're not one of his. If y'all church have communion and y'all not drinking out of one cup, you're not his. Jesus drunk out of one cup. With COVID-19 going around, I don't think you want to drink out of one cup. Not only that, you don't do it enough. You should do it every third Sunday. The Bible didn't tell me how often to do it, but as often as you do it, do it in remember. Well, Pastor, why y'all don't have, amen, every fourth Sunday, amen, communion service? Why, why? I know, amen, what that means already. When I lift that cup, I understand that this is, amen, a reminder that Jesus' blood was shed for this old sinner. Wish I had a witness. That piece of bread, let me know that that body was broken for me. Isaiah 53 said he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my inequities. He was chastised and beaten and slapped that I might have peace with God. I don't need a communion service every amen month to remind me of what it means, amen, to fellowship with Jesus. And before you take it, amen, you got to repent for about a week. Don't approach this communion service, amen, with sin in your heart. How are you going to get it out of your heart? You are a human being. It's not removed. It's forgiven. His heart is continually evil from his youth. If you don't believe it, go look in the mirror. I love the Lord because he first loved me. When I realized, amen, that you can't please him no other way but having faith in what Jesus did for you, I began to live a little bit better. Jesus did not die because I warranted it. He died because I needed it. And I couldn't do anything different without it. That's why I praise him. That's why I love him because he what? Loved me first. And I didn't really love him until I understood he loved me first. It was that that drew me closer to him. God, you really love me? Do you know who I am? He said, boy, I've been knowing you before you was born. Why? Because you're just like your daddy. And so are you. Come on, somebody. Wish I had a witness. Yeah. God wants you to know that that rainbow in the sky is more than just a promise that he'll never send a flood again. But it's a promise that he'll keep his promises. It's a promise that he'll shows it. He said in his heart one day, never again. Not just only by flood, but it won't be fire next time. God won't, amen, tell you, amen, make a promise to you. I'm not going to destroy it no more by flood and then send a fire. Amen. Wish you had a witness. That's not the God I know in the scriptures, amen, will support that. The God I know said, come unto me, all of you that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burdens are what? Light. He don't put no more on you than you can bear. Amen. The God that I serve is a God that looks at me every day and says, come on, son. Yeah, but Lord, let me pray for us because I ain't got no business being in your presence right now. God says, shut up and come on, follow me. The time when you ought to be falling on your knees and say, God, I need your presence. We're trying to run from it. I got to get myself together before I go to church. Huh? A sinner man would tell you, boy, if I go to your church, the roof won't cave in. I say, well, if it didn't cave in on Paul, it won't cave in on you either. Amen. If it didn't cave in, amen, on some of the ranking of sinners I know, it ain't going to cave in on you. Why? Because the love of God, amen, is for you and not against you. God wants you to know who he is. He is, amen, a God, amen, that's only, not only merciful, but he's a God of what? Grace. And that grace means you did nothing to deserve what you got from God. God see who you are. You don't, listen, you don't change your ways to come to God. 
You come to God just as I am without one plea. But that is blood was shed for me. I got to get right. Then I'm coming to church where you'll never come. Because you'll never be right in God's eyes. You're only right, amen, through your faith in the righteous one, and that's Jesus. And Jesus, amen, is our righteousness. Can I get a witness? He died that we might have the righteousness of God in us. Isn't God a good God? That rainbow lets me know that, God, you love me in spite of. You love your people. That's the depth of the love of God, the breadth, the height, and the depth. Isn't God all right? It's incomprehensible to mankind. Oh, what love hath the Father for us. Isn't God a good God? He gave his only son for you and I. Lord, I love you today. I don't want to preach nothing else, y'all. If y'all get tired of me preaching this, I'm sorry. I wish I had something else that tickle your amen ears. But I just don't. Even when I try to get a message, God, God bring me right back to the same thing. Listen, I want folk to know who I am, Ocean. Not what you made him to be. Not what I made him to be, but the scriptures expose God. Can I get a witness? God, you exposed. And God said, yeah, now, amen, teach it that way. Amen. Don't tickle anybody's ears. It's not, amen, about pep talk. Can I get a witness? It's not about sensationalism. It's about the goodness of God. God, I had another thing going on this morning, though. Don't worry about it. I put that rainbow there for a reason. No, not just for you, Ocean. You're not that special. <laughs> Come on, somebody. But I sure felt special this morning, Elder Jackson. Over our church. It could have been over anybody else's church. But not only was it over our church, but it was perfectly over our church. I said, look at us. Boy, we so special. And God said, go somewhere and sit down. Everybody is. I said, but Lord, this thing is over our church. Your promises. And then God began to deal with me about it. Not just a flood promise. But the depth. The height. The width. And the length of the love of God. Cannot even be a man phantom in our mind. Can I get a witness in here? Saints of God, the Bible says, if God so loved us, then we ought to love one another. It's time for the church to get back to loving one another and stop judging one another. Can I get a witness? I'm about to get off of being a social media because I'm tired of folk talking about my brothers and my sisters. I'm tired of folks sending me things trying to point out what a preacher is saying and how it don't line up with the word of God. Go somewhere and sit down. Amen. They're doing this and they're doing that and the church this day and the church that. Hush. Just shut up. Come on, somebody. Get to know him for yourself. Amen. Get to know him what? For yourself. A trick of the devil is to divide. Jesus said a house divided against itself cannot stand. Are y'all hearing me? Stop judging folk and start praying for people. One other problem that you might have, when you start praying for people, you pray for people sometimes because you feel that you're right and they're wrong. Can I get a witness? Yeah. You find out later on sometime in life that you were wrong all the time and they were right. <laughs> I've been doing this a long time, saints. I'm transparent. The things I used to teach, I don't teach no more. Amen. Why? Because I was teaching what I was told. But when you begin to learn and you begin to know, come away from what you heard and talk about what you know. Amen. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. When I was in the third and fourth grade, as I can remember, it was teaching me that one plus one is two. Three times three is nine. Nine minus six is three. I thought that was it. But I got in the fifth grade, and they began to talk about division. Division? 
what's this? Ain't no division. Mama, teacher talking about some division. Ain't no such thing. If it ain't multiplication, amen, addition and subtraction, it ain't. Can I get a witness? And that's just how we are. Things that we, we, we've known, amen, for often, so, so often, and then when God's trying to teach us, amen, to go higher, we, we, we reject it. Where they get that from? We've been had it. You just ain't got to that level yet. Where did the vision come from? The other Jackson, little did I know, after a while, we're going to be talking about 90 degree angles, 45 degree angles, and three or 60 degree circles. What are y'all talking about? Perpendicular lines. And then you get up to algebra. Let us stand. I'm through. Praise the Lord. In Christ, you're constantly growing. Can you say growing? You're constantly what? Growing. Let me tell you another story and I'm going to leave you alone. In the book of Galatians, Paul said, if any amen body teach you anything other than what we have taught you, let him be what? Accursed. Can I get a witness? Amen. And what amen I've heard early on was that if anybody teach you anything other than what you were hearing here, don't believe it. Let them be accursed. So anything went with what I was indoctrinated into, uh-uh, that ain't none of God. Only to find out that's not what Paul was talking about. Paul was not talking about hold on to what you've heard, amen, somebody say it and how you was taught. He, Paul wasn't talking about that. He was simply saying that you have heard that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of the world, and you can only be saved through him and through his blood. Paul said, if anybody else teach anything different from that, let them be what? A curse. He was not talking about holding on to what you've heard, amen, versus this denomination or that denomination or that denomination. Anybody hear me? Mm -mm, that's not what he's talking about. So a lot of Christians to this day right here cannot grow because they refuse to hear the scriptures. They refuse to develop a relationship with God and dare to believe him. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Let stuff go that you know better. Erica, can I baptize you? Again? You been baptized? Yes. What they said over you? Oh, Dad. <laughs> Don't reject my. Yeah, would you squeeze them out? That's why you got to do some push-ups. <laughs> what they said over you when they baptized you? So you don't even know, do you? I remember. What they said over you? I re-baptized you in the name of Jesus, so wish me of your sins. Do you know that or you heard that? Yes, that Holy Ghost. Do you, do you know that or you heard that? I know that. No, you don't. I know it now. No, you don't. Okay. You just know that's, that's, that's what they do, but you don't remember what they baptized you in. <laughs> I now baptize you in the name of lemon juice. Come on. You don't know what they say, do you? Do you? No, you don't. Because you can't tell me. That's because you know what we baptize in, but you don't know what they baptize you with. Anybody get my point? You got my point? They will tell you sometimes that if they didn't say this and didn't say that, come on, you <laughs> And who did it? That man might have been drunk when he did it. It's not the man that did it. It's the man that went down. It's your heart that God looks at. Can I get a witness? If I might not say the right thing, God look at your heart. You're the one that's going in his name saying, hey, thank you, Lord. Isn't God good? No matter what I'm thinking, as I'm doing it, love of God though says this child got a mind on me I'm not going to hold her accountable for what somebody else is thinking about her <laughs> isn't God good God wants you to know that he loves you and in his heart 
he understands you. Am I right about it? That's why he died for you. He didn't die, amen, for you simply because, amen, you begged him to because you never did. He died for you because he knew that you needed him. And voluntarily he sent his son to die that you might have life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He understand that you will never, amen, meet his holy standards. But he also understand that if you put your faith in him who was holy and was totally righteous, you have, amen, been accepted by him. You have life in him. Lord, we thank you today in Jesus' name. Thank you for the assurances. Thank you for the rainbow that you put in the sky. Thank you, Lord God, that we can look to you and know that you are a God of integrity, that you will keep your promises. Not only that, but you love us. And you said, never again will I destroy everything that I've made. Why? Because you understand that man needs a savior and he is helpless without you. Therefore, you sent a man, the atoning sacrifice, my Lord Jesus Christ, who fulfilled your righteousness for my name's sake. And you died that I may have a right to life. And thank you for the life that you give. We love you for it. And we appreciate you. And thank you for, amen, letting us know every now and then, hallelujah, that you are a God, amen, that will not waver. Thank you for the rainbow. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Give God a big hand clap if you don't mind. Thank you, Lord. We'll pray for you. If you desire prayer, amen, you may come. You desire prayer. If you don't know the Lord, amen, and the pardon of your sins, you may come. Never ask God to take away your sins in Jesus' name. You can come. Why? Because you need Jesus. Can you say need Jesus? He's the only one that God accepts. He don't accept the bishop. The bishop can't take away your sins. The TV preacher can't take away your sin. Can I get a witness? The father that some people confess to, he can't take away your sin. Father, forgive me for I have sinned. Not that father. He can't take away your sin. Only one can satisfy God on your behalf, and that's Jesus. You can't satisfy God on your own behalf. Only he can do it. If you need him, come on. You desire him, come on. Hallelujah. He's a good God. Somebody sing us a song, we'll be through. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. That's good. 
I did an illustration with Erica just to show you. She was baptized as a kid. Amen. Uh, no, no, no. The first time you were baptized, you were a child. Both times as a child, she don't know what, what, what was going on. Anybody hear me? Your children don't know what's going on when they're baptized. Same with adults. A lot of things that we come into Christ that we're told by people, we accept what folks say. Are you hearing me? Yeah. But thanks to God, as you begin to learn, isn't God good? You find out everything that you were told. Open your mind. Open the word of God and study it. When you go to God in prayer, let God bless you. Open your spirit. Come on, somebody. Didn't God do that? As children, we accept what we're told. Reading, writing, arithmetic. That's all I know. But I don't know everything it consists of. I didn't know. There was a vision. Angles. Algebra. As a saint of God, grow in God. Tell your neighbor, say, grow in God. Stop just depending upon what you're hearing. Open that word of God for yourself. Get before God. Sure, you need teachers. Sure. But get into that word. Sometimes you can lay on the floor and open that word. Come from, in, come from out of here. Can you say out of here? And let the, God, let the Lord bless you. It's more than what you've been told and what you hear. God want to speak to you himself. Can you say himself? Get that relationship with him. Build it up. So we thank you. May heaven smile on you and God bless you. Give God one more handshake. Thank you. All right. Any birthdays in the house? Who got a birthday? Bree? Bree, we didn't sing your birthday last week. No, that was your mother's wedding. You got a birthday, Rissa? You got a birthday? Huh? Who birthday? Thursday? This Thursday coming? Sister First, Renee. come on. Sister Renee was two Who else got a birthday? Sister Renee. Two weeks ago? Well, we didn't get to say happy birthday to you. Digging Gladney? Order her, order her up here right now. Give her an order. When's your birthday? Oh, August 30th. Oh, Lord. We ain't even in August yet. Come on, Sister Gladney. How old are you, Bree? 29. You weren't telling about it, did you? <laughs> How old are you? You can tell. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, who is birthday? Yours? Hush on it. Anybody else? Come on, sister. Uh, sister Bells, when's your birthday? Huh? The 21st. Come on. How are you, sir? How are you, man? Good to see you. Bless you, sir. You are 34. For real? 37? All right, y'all. Anybody else? That's it. Happy birthday to you. Got a Jackson. Happy birthday. Hold on. Don't y'all get ahead of the preacher? Who else? Mother Franklin? Somebody else in here. All right, let's go then. Happy birthday to you. 21. Happy 21. birthday. 37. To Come on. Happy birthday. Thank you. 
Sunday, mm-hmm. I wanted to do a joint venture with Sister Narissa mm-hmm. and Sister Hill mm-hmm. and do a uh, going back to school cookout. Okay. Um, the food will be provided, it'll be free, mm-hmm. but the church will take a donation so it can go to the youth ministry and anything that the church needs. Mm-hmm. So, probably myself and Sister Narissa and Sister Hill, we're going to get the uh, food mm-hmm. and we're going to cook it here in the church. It's all free. Just everybody come, bring friends and family. The place run out. Mm-hmm. Donations are greatly appreciated for the youth ministry right. and the church. At the church? At the church. Okay, about what time you're looking at? So whenever you finish preaching, I'll okay. be out there. You'll be at the cooking? Yeah. All right, I'm talking about. Now, can I? I'm already, I'm already 50. Can I eat? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. God is good. Everybody can eat. God is good. Everybody, you're invited to our 50. I'm half, I'm half a century old. So, brother, uh, brother Reggie, he's be our cook. Look at that, we got donations already. Hey, give that to me. I don't, I don't, I don't trust brother Reggie. Give that to me. I'm just kidding, bro. Twenty-five dollars already been gifted. We're looking forward to having a great time. Thank God for our children. Praying for them. They go back to school next month. Well, a couple of weeks from now. Mm-hmm. Give all donations to Sister Hill. All donations to Sister Hill. Amen. God bless you. Once again, Brother West Wickland back in the fold. Thank God for him. Being back with his family, wife, and children. God bless. All right, then. Let's stand. We have a word of prayer. We're going to close out. Are those my shoes? God is good. Huh? Everyone you want to close us out? All right, with uplifted hands, everybody. Brother Buchanan, if you hear me, y'all need to get back here ASAP. Sister Buchanan had a birthday yesterday, too. And we're going to wait till y'all get back before we sing to Sister Buchanan. And y'all better not be partying and revelizing. All right? Y'all need to get on back here, Buchanan. Down home in Alabama. I know how things go down there. All right, let's pray, y'all. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. We give your name, glory, and honor. We give you praise. Thank you for the rainbow. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for all that you've given and done for us. Ask that you will bless our children as they prepare to go back to school. Thank you, Lord, for the effort going into, amen, what we're preparing to send them to school, amen, knowing that they have our, amen, support, that we love them, and we appreciate them. Now, as we leave this place, but not your presence, go with us and be our peace and our destination. And it's in Jesus' name we thank you and we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. Tell you, God is good. Turn it How off, Makai. How was your week? Makai. Oh, it was actually New York.